Because bigger is always better, isn't it? Yeah, my KX3 just proved that. So why on earth would I want one of these little tiny things that probably doesn't do anything when I could have one of these huge monsters in my shack that takes up half a shelf? This time on K6 UDA Radio. So a few years back, I was at a ham fest, and uh, lo and behold, I saw these brand new power supplies by PowerWorks, and I thought this was the greatest thing since sliced bread. This is more portable, it'll power everything, it was 30 amps, it was a switching power supply. Less heat, less everything. Uh, so I bought a couple of these things. Took them back into the shack, put one in here, and uh, one in my motorhome. Last week, I upgraded my power supply to this brand new MFJ uh, that just came out here. This is, this one is the MFJ 4230 MVP. And it's kind of the next evolution to the switching power supply. I am a big fan of this already. It is a lot quieter than the, uh, than the, power, uh, than the PowerWorks model. The 30 amp switching power supply is just fine for all of my modern HF gear and my, uh, my mobile gear that I keep in the shack. A linear power supply applies the AC voltage uh, to the power transformer and it raises or lowers the voltage before being applied to the uh, regulator circuitry. Since the size of the transformer is indirectly proportional to the frequency of the operation, this results in a larger and heavier power supply. The switching power supply, on the other hand, can be as much as 80% smaller and lighter than, uh, than a linear supply, but it can generate high frequency noise that can interfere with super sensitive electronic equipment. A um, linear supply normally operates around 60% efficiency at 24 volt output, uh, and the switching power supply operates at about 80% or more. Linear power supplies have transient response rates up to 100 times faster than switching power supplies, which can be important in some situations. Just what those situations are, I have no idea. All right, now here's what I really like about this new MFJ 30 amp uh, switching supply. In voltage mode here, um, I've got the uh, detent, the little uh, knob there, set at a detent at 13.8 volts. I could run it all the way up to 16 volts, or I could turn it down to 4 volts. And you'll see here, just under 10 volts, my radio gets unhappy and it shuts itself off. But it'll turn itself right back on at 13.8 volts. What I'm not real wild about, well, what I don't really need here, are these banana plugs. Uh, a little redundant for my use, but I like having the option of using them if I need it. Now, moving into uh, amperage mode. On receive, I can see exactly what my radio is uh, drawing on amperage and what it's drawing on transmit. Now both of these power supplies both have the banana plugs and power pole uh, connectors on them. The uh, MFJ has the power pole connectors on the back, which I really like. And in my case, it makes it a nice clean uh, installation with no, no wires in the front. MFJ sells their power supply for $100 on their site. 
The PowerWorks model with the power poles retails for $119 on their site. And if you can live without power poles and just use banana plugs and you want digital monitors, you can get a new one from PowerWorks for about $160. Hey, did I mention I got t-shirts for sale? Yeah, I got the, uh, the Bitchin' Blue and Tactical Tan in the, uh, the gaudiest ham radio t-shirt known to man. You could show your style and show them that you're not a stuffy old ham. I've got, uh, I've got medium, large, extra large, 2X, and I've got one, one more blue 3X. So if you're uh, any of those sizes and you want to get one of these cool t-shirts, uh, $18.95 or $18 bucks plus $4.95 uh, shipping and handling, and you can uh, send me an email and I'll get that out to you. Coming up here next week, uh, December 3rd, the Everglades Amateur Radio Club is hosting their own QSO party, and that is coming direct from the Florida Everglades. Now, I don't know if you've ever talked to the Florida Everglades before, but hey, I told them that sounded kind of cool, and I'd give them a little plug. So uh, make a contact, if you can, on December 3rd with W4SVI. I have a little radio here that is surplus to my needs. This is my original um, ICOM ID51, and uh, it is all charged up and ready to go with the factory battery and everything. I don't need this guy anymore, so uh, it's for sale. If you want this one, 225 bucks, send me an email and uh, you can pay me by PayPal or check or whatever if you want it. Um, I'll sell it to you. Want to win a free KX2 from Ellacraft and me? Hey, all we need to do is get to 5,000. We're at about 500 away right now. You know what? When I first announced this, we got 600 new subscribers in about three days. So I think by next week, we could, I know we could, get this thing up to 5,000 and uh, get the game on. And it doesn't matter if you're the first subscriber or the 5,000th subscriber, you've got an equal shot at getting this. So don't, don't try to be the last guy because we're gonna be waiting forever. Guys, I have been having a blast this past year making videos for you guys and, uh, and learning more about the hobby that we all love. And for you two or three guys out there that are bitching that ham radio is dead and, and I'm a, and I'm a dead, um, <laughs> you know, here's a nice little cat video for you. And for the rest of you guys, hey, if you like my videos, hit subscribe, hit that like button, share it everywhere you can, share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. Talk about it on ham radio, talk about it in your ham radio clubs, and uh, I'll see you guys next week with a whole bunch of cool gift ideas for the hams in your life. So that's it for me, guys. Happy Turkey Day. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.